Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another Saturday morning with the Lord's Prayer. I am excited to be before you. It has been a while since we did our last video, but I am glad to be here in your presence today. We are here continuing talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and we're going to continue with patience. But before I start, I just want to say what an awesome time we had in Jamaica on missions, just praying and serving the Lord, doing what it is that he's called us to do, going forth and helping those, you know, in need and just being there to be able to pray people through, to offer up deliverance, to share and break bread with over the word of God. So I am just excited for how God is moving in this time. Um, and we will see what happens with the Lord's Prayer on Saturdays as we begin to go out more and more, as we do more, you know, as God calls us to different places. We will, we will see, right? We want, I will always want to be in obedience to God for whatever it is that he asks or assigns me to do. So... With that said, continue to like, subscribe, and share each prayer. And this morning, like I said, we're going to talk about patience. So if it's one thing that I've learned over the years is patience. I think patience is something that is tremendously important. I think as we are younger, it's a little bit difficult to have patience. It's difficult to really understand what it means to be patient. Um, I remember that I used to be a very impatient person. And now when people speak of me, they're like, I don't think I have that level of patience that Joy has. I don't think that I can put up with what Joy puts up with, or I don't think that, you know, I could ever deal or go through or understand what it is that she deals with. And it's not to be um, bragging on myself, but it's to essentially share with you that there will come a point when the fruit of patience is actually developed, right? I had to go through some things in order to develop that level of patience. So let's talk about patience, right? We're talking about Galatians 5 and 22, that scripture 5, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And patience is the fourth fruit of the spirit. So patience in the Greek is macrothemia. And that essentially means forbearance, long suffering. And some of the other versions will say it, right? They will offer long suffering or forbearance as the word instead of patience in Galatians. Um, the dictionary defines patience as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. But let's go back to the Greek for a moment. The Greek word macrothemia combines the root macro, meaning long, and thumus, meaning temper, essentially meaning long temper, right? So it literally means to be long tempered. It implies the opposite of short temper, right? Describing the fact that you need to hold back for a long period of time. Okay, let's try that again. It describes you holding back for a long period of time. Okay. It simply means to be long suffering towards one another, to persevere, to bear patiently, right? To delay. Think about it like that. To delay, to be even tempered. 
to be patient in bearing the offenses of others, to be slow in avenging or punishing, but we know that we don't avenge nor punish because vengeance is God's. When you read Hebrews 10, verse 36, it says, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Now, in this scripture, some versions may say patience, they may say persevere, they may say endurance, but the idea is don't back down, but persist in faithfulness willingly enduring whatever fallout that produces. What are you saying? Being on this journey with God, being a disciple of Christ, a follower of Jesus, essentially, you will face hardship. You will face difficulty. You will have um, great moments. You will have Moments when you're in a valley, you'll have moments when you're on the mountaintop. You'll have times when you have to make tough decisions. You'll have moments where you feel as if this can't be God, but it truly is God because he's trying to develop you and produce something in in you and through you, right? And the idea isn't for us to fall off course or to walk away or to give up or to throw in the towel, but it's literally to persevere. It's to push, it's to pursue, even though, even though the outcome doesn't come out our way, even though it doesn't turn out the way we thought, even though we did not get the anticipated outcome, it doesn't matter. We don't back down. We still pursue, we still persist in faith knowing that the promises are what we're waiting for. It's what we're waiting to receive from God, right? We have to be patient through it all. If God says he's going to bless you, be patient. If he says, okay, I'm going to send Sister Watermelon with $100 for you. Don't pick up the phone and call Sister Watermelon and be like, hey, God told me you're going to send me $100. No, you be patient because maybe there's something that he has to do with Sister Watermelon in order for her to get to that point to give you the money. Right? It could take a week. It could take a month. But it's going to come right at the appointed time. Right? Be patient when things don't seem like they're going your way. Maybe you're grieving. Maybe you're having a hard time. You lost family members. You lost friends. You lost some people that are close to you, especially during COVID. And you're beating yourself up and beating yourself up. Either that you can't get over it or either that I can't believe I couldn't be there for them or you're, you're wishing that you were in their place. You have to give yourself grace and mercy just like God gives it to you. That is a part of being patient. And it's the same when it comes to other people. The grace and the mercy of God needs to be applied so that we can be patient with them. Patience may involve perseverance in the face of delay. It may involve tolerance of being provoked without responding in disrespect or anger. Let me talk about that, right? I know at times, I've sh- I probably shaded on here, that on one of my jobs, I was speaking with someone who was new, a consultant, And she was sharing information that she heard from someone over the phone. And I told her, no, the policy is A, B, C, D. And she said, oh, well, the person said the policy is X, Y, Z. And I said, no, we are the creators of the policy. We wrote the policy. This office supplies the policy and it's A, B, C, D. 
oh, well, they were saying it's X, Y, Z. And I said, okay, so call them back at the limits, A, B, C, D. And she was like, well, I don't know who to believe. So her saying, I don't know who to believe when I'm telling you we are the source of the policy and you rather believe the hearsay or you rather weigh the hearsay and the actual policy makers um, policy, I just couldn't understand what you weren't getting, what she wasn't getting. And I literally hurled myself over the desk because I was impatient. I was getting frustrated and angry and didn't have the words to communicate what it is that I needed to say, what, what I needed to get, how I needed to get my point across in that moment. In that moment, what could I have done? I could have walked away. I could have asked someone else to explain to her. I could have easily said, okay, well, let me call so-and-so and explain or discuss what it is that maybe they're having difficulty with, right? I could have done many other things, but I was impatient, impatient. I was impatient. I did not do those things. I hurled myself across the desk to try to get at her as if what was that going to do for me? Nothing. Okay. Would get me fired. So when it comes to being patient, there's a level of tolerance that we have to have without being disrespectful or angry, right? Patience may also be forbearance when under strain, especially when faced with long-term difficulty. We were locked up for how long in the house? Couldn't go anywhere. And we still had to be patient. You live with your family 24-7. Normally, you get up, um, you and your partner, you go to work, you go your separate ways. Your children, they go to school. So everybody's out of the house for at least, let's say, 10 to 12 hours in the day. And then you reconnect for like three, four hours at night. You go to bed. So really, you're spending maybe six hours a day with each other. Now you've gone to spend 24-7 with each other. And like some people just couldn't stand it. They could not stand it. They couldn't take it. It was too much. And that's part of being patient forbearance, long-suffering, persevering, enduring under strain, especially when faced with long-term difficulty, or even being able to wait for a long amount of time without getting irritated or bored. How many of us have been asking God for something for years and have yet to see the manifestation and we're getting irritated and we're like, God, where are you? And we're like, we're ready to turn our back on God. That's not being patient. It is not being patient. That's not it. So I I have seen that the different types of patients, right? There's a horizontal patient. So the relationship amongst you and your peers, amongst you and your coworkers, your friends, any other human being. Horizontal patience, right? It's patience with other people, their demands, and their failings. Because we seem to forget that we're all not perfect, including ourselves, right? So we may consider some people slow learners. They may be hard to understand or even sometimes unreasonable, just downright unreasonable. Or maybe they have bad habits that drive you crazy. I know, and and I, if she ever sees this video, she'll laugh, but I remember when I met one of my close friends back in, let's say 2014, when I met her culturally, you know, she may not be accustomed to saying good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it was. And she'd always come up and be like, Hey, and I'm like, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, For me, something that I grew up with that, you know, it's just 
it's just your mannerism. It's to say good morning and good night and good afternoon when you're speaking to someone, right? You're acknowledging the day. You're acknowledging and and, and really you're acknowledging that um, it's morning time and I want to come and speak with you and it's manners, right? Like we just grow up with that in our mind. So for me, I had a hard time when she would just come up and just start talking and, or anyone would just come up and I'd be, and I'd stop them and I'd go, good morning, good afternoon. And they'd look at me and I'm like, good morning. I'd repeat it again. Good afternoon. Whatever time of day it was until they got it. And it took weeks and months and months and months of me doing that where people would come up and they'd say, good morning or good afternoon. It's just respectable. Right. And I remember that that thing drove me crazy. Like it irritated me. She texts me and, and I'd be like, good morning. And then I'd wait for her to say good morning back before I even responded. But you know, that was just a manner of, that's just a matter, matter of because I grew up with that being a form of respect and of manners doesn't necessarily mean I have to force other people or force my ideas on other people, right? That's not what it necessarily means, but I was impatient because she would never do it. I was impatient and I was, and I could get, I could feel the frustration and the agitation anytime she came and did not say it. So things like that, right? Um, losing your patience isn't worth it. It just makes things worse. Patience and understanding towards others is essential right? Let's say you're onboarding a new employee. Let's say you work in customer service. Let's say you are a supervisor and you're over people. Let's say you're delegating tasks. Let's say you live with your parents and you're an adult. Let's say all kinds of different scenarios. You have to learn to be patient and understanding with others right? It's a huge help when you can understand where others are coming from. You can understand the difficulty they're having. And sometimes that requires, not sometimes, that does require empathy. It requires empathy. It requires self-awareness. It requires emotional intelligence. It requires a lot of things. And, you know, I can easily come on here and say, be patient, be patient, just be patient. No, but there are other components to being patient that helps you build up the fruit of patience. As simple as that. Listening skills. They're important. Emotional intelligence, like I said, is important. Being able to understand someone, where they're coming from. Right. I remember one time on one of my jobs that um, I had a best friend that died. I broke up with my fiance and I had to move all in a short period of time and things were just chaotic. And I remember I couldn't even really grieve my best friend. Couldn't really, because other things were going on and for six months I'd show up to work and it was like, look, look, the body was present, but joy was not there. And after six months, my boss said to me, I get it. I understand, but I need you to show up. I need you here. I need you to focus. And I I checked back in, but I didn't realize I had even checked out. But that was her using emotional intelligence and noticing that I needed a moment. Recognizing that she needed to be patient with me through the grieving process because she understood because of the conversations we had about this friend and about things that were going on in my life, right? People need to have understanding. And this is why we have 
so many, uh, so much unrest all around us. We just don't want to take time to understand one another. We don't want to take time to have any kind of empathy towards each other. We don't want to listen to one another. And that's a problem. But we need to begin to have patience with each other. There's also patience that is developed in hardship. Whether it's grieving, whether it's financial loss, whether it is you're moving from a different state, you're going through a period of transition, whatever life challenges are thrown your way. Maybe it's a sickness you've had for a while and you figured by now you'd get it under control. Or maybe you've had cancer and you've had chemo and the, the, um, the tumors come back. Whatever it is that is considered a life hardship that sets you back, we still need to have patience with that, right? Because it requires you to wait long term for an outcome. It requires you to wait long term for medical treatment for the lawsuit to go through, for the financial breakthrough to come, right? And sometimes it's you saving for a vacation, you saying, okay, you're doing the work for the promotion, you saying, okay, I'm going to take my health seriously and get fit. It, or even sometimes it is the unexpected. You got evicted, right? Your car got repossessed. You um, lost someone. You got fired from your job, right? You got into a car accident and now you're bedridden. Or all of a sudden your body's paralyzed. All of these things, like, it could be freak accidents, And you still have to be patient. Like you can't take out your frustration of what happened to you out on others. Remember I said earlier, you have to offer the same grace and mercy that God gives you to others. Even in the midst of your circumstance and situation, it requires determination and focus to achieve, focus, to look past, focus, to keep going. This is where you learn to keep your emotions under control. The emotions can range from eagerness to get stuff done. It can be anger at the frustrations that you have or you encounter along the way, right? It can demotivate you. All of these things can happen, but you can't let life circumstances dictate how you're going to live, dictate if it's going to take your happiness, dictate if it's going to take your joy, dictate if it's going to take your peace, dictate if it's going to change who you are. No, this is, this requires you to have patience. Remember God asking his disciples, um, When he was in Gethsemane, can't you watch and pray for one hour? Three times he had to ask them that. Three times. Because they were falling asleep. They couldn't hang. Patience. How long? We don't. God only knows how long Elijah Elisha waited for Elijah before Elijah finally found Elisha and gave him his mantle. God only knows the time before that, even their their first encounter. What about Ezekiel who had to lay on his side for 300 and something, something days? Patience. Ruth and Naomi. The husband, Naomi's husband died, Ruth's husband died, Naomi's sons died, and then they had to go and move to another town, and you're rebuilding life. Patience. And she finally ended up with Boaz. Patience. Hardship is going to come. 
but it requires your patience. And it's not just you sitting still and doing nothing, but it requires you to keep focus on God. It requires you to stop focusing on the situation and letting the situation take control of your life. Okay, you have your daily hassles, right? You get stuck in traffic. How many of you like to flip the bird in traffic? We can't get patience for that. Older generation using technology, frustrated because they they don't know what they're doing. They, They feel lost. They get confused. They get irritated. Patience. Take your time. Think things through. Everything's not in a hurry. And I think because we're in such a time where everything comes immediately, it's like a popcorn, like a microwave kind of an error where everything just comes, 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 comes to you like this. We don't know how to to wait any longer. Right. We don't know how to do that. We have to learn to maintain self-discipline. We got to learn to discipline our our spirit, discipline our emotions, discipline how we feel physically, discipline. If you can stay calm in the face of all that happens, all the frustration, you're going to be more empathetic. You're going to be able to suffer less from depression, less from anxiety, less from worrying. That's why it's so important. And no way am I saying to be a pushover or lay down and take it. Sometimes we just have to learn to maybe establish boundaries, right? Or other times it's a matter of like the grace and the mercy, as I was saying earlier. Establishing boundaries. That means you need to know your triggers. You need to know what triggers you to be impatient. I know at one period in time, anything my mother said to me, just annoyed, frustrated. And I had to start thinking like, what is it? Is it that you just don't want to hear from her? And then I said, okay, well, it can't be that. So we need to do better. And I would start to listen. And then there would be times that she, there would be things that she says specifically that I'm like, you know, it, it would sound stereotypical. So then I get annoyed. So then I say, okay, you need to begin to explain, use your words and explain and communicate. Okay. I don't like when you say X. Because it's stereotypical of blah, 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 blah. Just because we grew up with this mindset in the Caribbean doesn't mean that it needs to continue, blah, 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 blah. Right? And having that conversation and talking that out. So now if ever she has to bring it up again, right, which she doesn't, I wouldn't feel irritated because I would have already shared my viewpoint and I can then share it again. Sometimes a lot of, well, a lot of times our impatience come from lack of communication skills, not being able to communicate how we feel, communicate what's going through our mind. And instead, our physical bodies begin to manifest anxiety. We shut down, we clam up, our shoulders get tensed up up here and a heart race and palpitates and all these things going on. You could possibly give yourself a heart attack or a stroke. All because of what? Of why? We have to learn to be patient. And patience has its roots in frustration. It's a feeling of rising stress that starts when you, when you feel that your needs and your wishes are being ignored. It's when you feel that your needs and your wishes are being ignored. And this is the other thing. When we have expectation of people and they don't know what the expectation is and they don't meet the expectation, we we lose patience. Tell me I'm wrong. 
nope, you're not wrong. We need to stop holding people to these expectations that they have no idea about. I know for me, I'm learning patience with having a new ministry that I'm under because it's different people. It's different personalities, right? You have to learn new people. And that's where we have to also give ourselves grace and mercy because you may be accustomed to doing something a certain way, dressing a certain way, talking a certain way, being a certain way. And then you come and you meet someone and they rub you the wrong way. But then you go, are they rubbing me the wrong way because I don't like them? Or are they rubbing me the wrong way because God is using them to be iron sharpening iron? Sandpaper to sandpaper. Are they going to work some things out of me that God needs to be developed in me? That needs to be corrected, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be shaped in me. Are they here for that? Or am I just irritated and don't want to have patience with them because I just don't want to like them? I just don't want to be in their presence. I just don't want to deal with them. Is it a flesh thing or is it a spirit thing? We, we need to learn to have patience. Not everything is going to come like this. Some things may take years to come, years to develop, years to happen. And other things may happen in the blink of an eye. Other things may happen in the blink of an eye. Let me tell you something. I started my master's in 2000 and when did I start that school? In 2011, I tried going to start a master's program and then it was like, Work was too much. I I wouldn't be able to keep up. So I said, okay, let me go and get a second bachelor's and just change my whole path. And couldn't even keep up with that. So a couple years go by and I try again because I've now changed jobs. And I'm like, okay, let me try again. And I purpose in my mind. I'm going to focus and determine myself to go to school and just work took over. I would never make it to class on time or I wouldn't make it to class at all. And I could never leave work early enough to get there. So I left it alone. And as we were in the pandemic, I said, now is the opportunity. Put yourself first, put everything else aside. Now is the opportunity. And when we first came home in the pandemic, like, I was working till three in the morning and working on the weekends and all kinds of craziness. And I said, nope, it's not worth it. It's not, you will not kill yourself for this job. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and work on my master's. And I have now finished as of this month. I am finished and I am, I have graduated with my master's. How many years ago did I start or attempt to try to start? 2011. 11 years later? Patience. And God was the one that really pushed me to go do the masters because I was good with the bachelor's. Because what he wanted was a business master's. And I was like, I'm an art person. But patience. Even with doing the coursework, because I am a creative in my mind, I had to focus beyond what I would normally, what what is normally required for me. My determination and my focus kept me going through these courses. I made up in my mind and said, I'm going to follow through and I'm going to commit. But that is all a part of patience. Humility, it's a part of patience. Determination, perseverance, endurance. They're all a part of being patient. Right? Um, The scripture that says, I can't remember where it is right now. I think it's in Philippians. Be anxious for nothing, but through 
prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. He doesn't want us to be anxious about anything. He doesn't want us to worry about anything. He doesn't want us to be, to lose our temper on anything. He wants us to bring everything to him in prayer. God will direct your path in prayer. He will let you know the instruction in prayer. And I think if many of us would seek him, we would have a different level of patience today. We would be in a different place today. So I'm going to pray that the Lord thy God would grant you patience. He would help you even in the midst of whatever you're going through, whatever difficulty you're facing, that you will still seek the grace and the mercy of God on your life. And that you will give somebody else that same grace and that mercy. You will grant them the same. I pray that that you would persevere. You would endure all hardships. You will continue to push and pursue God so that you can see his promise. And I pray these things over your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So join me next week, Saturday. For the Lord's Prayer, the same time, same place, at 6 a.m. Tell somebody.